To whom does the universe belong? Certainly not humans alone. Our interconnection and interdependency with all that surrounds us should be confirmation enough that the universe actually belongs to every living creature. And even that which we perceive as not living, the earth itself, its mantle, the stones that make the mountains and the valleys, the universe belongs to them as much as it does us. But what about our partnership with these beings? our stewardship of our planet. We have driven away and massacred these beings, creating deforestation in our wake. Our overconsumption of meat derived from intense factory farming techniques disregards the spiritual being of our animals and depletes our natural resources. We used the ocean as a dumping ground and polluted air where the birds once flew. Technology may make us move faster and further while air pollution kills 9 million people a year. We created an economic strategy and promised to raise the living standard of the poor. But the rich only became richer and the poor poorer. And now we live separated by suspicion and fear, trying to make as much money as possible, while deliberately ignoring the impending fate of our world. Our endless need for economic growth, our belief that money can buy anything, has left us in a spiritual void, and our world in grave danger. Then came the virus called Corona, the invisible enemy that threatens and challenges our entire human race. It is an equalizer, sweeping across borders regardless of ideology, infecting people regardless of race, creed, color, or religion. Even royalty and Hollywood superheroes are not immune. Only a complete lockdown, a complete halt of all economic activities, seems to slow its advance. Some will say that maintaining our way of life is more important. Some say that there is no such thing as climate change. Some will say the virus is the result of an impatient God. But surely, hasn't God graced the planet with the same means of self-defense as all his creatures? Some might try to convince themselves that the timing of this new plague is coincidental. Native peoples have been the forebearers on this idea, that the entire planet is a living organism, and one day it will fight to protect itself. The world seems to be undergoing a drastic revolution. Fewer vehicles on the move has caused a drop in the nitrogen dioxide levels. The waters in the seas, rivers, and lakes have begun to clear. We see swans in the Venice canals and dolphins playing on the Italian seashores. We witness empty streets all over the world becoming a safe haven for the animals playing there. In the following weeks and months, nature will show us how things could be, how they should be. In the quiet confinement, life is slowing. Families are regrouping, getting back to things that are truly important in life. Amidst this, our heroes, civilians and military doctors, nurses and care workers, law enforcement, educators and social workers, 
and all those who continue our food distribution and other essential services, working day and night to save lives. This time can be a blessing. If we take this moment to reflect, meditate, and pray that we may accept this truth, that the universe is a common home to every creature in it. That everything is interconnected, including ourselves. If we meet the challenge of this event and broaden our focus of concern and our daily behavior to include sustainable environmental ecology, if we vow to protect all human life and begin to practice concrete acts of solidarity with the poor, if we begin to conduct ourselves ethically in all our economic affairs, if we cultivate a sense of deep communion with the rest of nature and great love and compassion for all our fellow beings, if we do this, then this dramatic human event will be a turning point. Our life is very short. Let us come together to create a better home for our future generations. Let's dare to take the leap. Let's dare to try. Let's dare to change.